Слава Украине! Слава привет Киева! Слава! Слава! Не знаю. Я не могу говорить по-украински. И не очень по-русски. Извините. Давай! Сделаю этот модел. So I've wanted to do a MiG-29 for a while. It's one of my favorite jets. I used to have a toy one when I was a little boy. And I especially like the cool digital pattern the Ukrainians put on theirs. To be honest, I've kind of liked Ukrainian since I was a boy. For no specific reason. So imagine my excitement when this Ghost of Kiev MiG-29 by ICM showed up and I had to get it. Out of the box, I was cautiously optimistic. There was some interesting molded detail, though I'm not sure about the pattern in the landing gear wells. The plastic was also quite a bit bendier than I'm used to. The cockpit area was kind of frustrating. The pilot seat didn't clearly fit into the cockpit tub, and I kind of had to guess where it should be positioned. One big thing missing from the cockpit is the poles for the ejection seat. I tried to remedy the deficiency with a little copper wire with limited success. The pilot seat has molded in seat belts that look kind of cheesy. Um, I went ahead and just stuck with them, but I think if I were to do it again, maybe I'd use some tin foil to make some belt clips or remove them entirely and build a more realistic harness with tape, foil, copper wire, that sort of thing. I noticed that the decals for the instrument panel don't match the part that they give you. So I decided to hand paint outlines and cut out individual dials to put on the plastic part.
the cockpit fit pretty well, but once again, I really wish they had added more detail. So it's about here that I began to notice some serious fit issues. For one, there wasn't a huge volume of flash, but everything had flash, or weird mold lines, or odd divots. Things didn't always clearly align, and the instructions were often vague about where something should go, or even what a part looked like. The parts weren't actually numbered on the sprue, so you have to use a map in the instructions, which was pretty annoying. And the result is a lot of trimming, a lot of puttying, and a lot of sanding. The one definitely good part about this kit is the missiles. I think they were very well done. I mean, yes, they have the flash and all that like all the other parts, but the fins were very, very thin and they looked really cool. Again, with the complaining about the fit. The vertical stabilizers, they left huge gaps that needed to be filled at an awkward angle. And then the connection on the port stabilizer didn't fit the hole. And it was in the wrong place, so I actually had to cut it down significantly. So now I feel like I'm complaining too much, but I really didn't like the exhaust nozzle. It looked more like a coffee filter. I actually got a chance to see the air park at the Fallon Naval Air Station, where they actually have a MiG-29. And the exhausts were intricate and really, really neat. It was actually one of the cooler parts of the plane. I think ICM really missed the mark with these cheesy cupcake sleeve things. The interior exhaust also had this annoying circle of flash that was really tough to get out. And the intake suffers from all of the fit and finish issues I've mentioned before. And again, they have really odd connection points. The one nice thing about any jet is the canopy is really easy to mask. If only the Zero had a bubble canopy. Uh, 
Ah, the wheels. They were molded badly. And I'll leave it at that. Okay, one advantage to the wheel's bad mold is that there was this nice rim that allows you to freehand paint the tires with ease. Silver linings, right? Sanding, 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 keep them modelers sanding, MiG-29. Seriously, I think I cut like two to three hours of footage just of me sanding. You're welcome. Oddly enough, with all that sanding, I really only had to rescribe like two panel lines. So I primed the whole thing white before painting, but all of the grays I used are pretty light anyway. Honestly, I think I would have gone an even lighter shade just to help the decals stand out a little bit more. You'll see. This isn't black, it's burnt iron. So, the decals. The decals were both the best part and one of the most frustrating parts of this model. I think part of it is actually my fault since I'm pretty sure I was using my decal solutions in the wrong order. I just got some Mr. Mark Setter and Mr. Mark Softer, and I've never really used them before, and the instructions on the bottle were covered by a warning label that can't be removed without also removing the instructions anyway. So, I guessed, and maybe I guessed wrong. Anyway, if you know which order they go in, let me know in the comments. Anyway, the camo decals are also huge. And they are good decals, but that means that they're delicate and kind of finicky. And so I kind of had trouble, especially with the large ones meant to cover huge, irregular parts of the plane.
Like I said, one of the best parts of the kit was the decals. They're very fine and there were lots of little ones that add a nice level of detail. And they kind of make you forget about all the things I disliked about this kit so far. The big decals covered some details, so I melted them with some extra thin glue. But be sure not to melt anything important. The landing gear actually gave me a lot of trouble. I had to drill holes and the instructions were very unclear. I'm also an idiot. I placed the forward landing gear in backwards. That is clear in the instructions, I just wasn't paying attention to it well enough. My fault. Luckily, I noticed it later on and turned it around off camera. So I tried to make the ordnance as cool as I could, since I think the missiles are one of the best parts of this kit. So I looked up reference photos and tried to replicate some neat markings and patterns. Yes, the landing gear drama kept on going. I really hope these doors are correct, because there's no way of telling from the instructions. And with that, the model is done. Well, almost. Um, I forgot to glue the little nose antenna thingies on, and then I, I, I fixed the forward landing gear. So it's better now. It's better. So overall, um, I don't know. I mean, I... I really wanted to like this kit. I really still want to like this kit. I mean, I'm fairly pleased with the way it's turned out. I mean, it's a MiG-29, so it's hard for it not to look cool. Um, but gosh, just with all of the flash issues, the fit and the finish and the constant like finicky things, 
the the exhaust nozzles they I mean despite my best efforts you know they still look like cupcake holders um, and I could probably fix that there's probably ways to do that there might be even aftermarket parts and that kind of business that could uh, solve the issue but um, I don't know it was just kind of one of those things honestly I mean the inside of the cockpit looks fine too I guess that's that's nice but um, yeah it was um, it was kind of a frustrating build just kind of from the beginning so I um, I don't know I really really want like I really really want to like the the kit I mean I had fun there's that I had fun had a good time um, so you know uh, I guess in the end that's the most important part right and so as long as you're having the fun um, and, and building a cool little kit and that's uh, what it is anyway so uh, before I show the final result really quick uh, I just want to say that uh, next week I'm going to do a quick review of my favorite battleship I've ever built actually I'm really excited about that one because I really like what I did with it and I want to show it off and all of this so stick around for that and then also the week after that I should be I'm really kind of trying to uh, uh, pull it off but I should be tackling the Soviet KV-2 tank um, so anyway, if you want, subscribe so you don't miss those. And if you don't subscribe, well, I don't know. I'll probably never know about it anyway. So do what you want. Do what you feel is best. Anyway, I wish you joy in your lives, and I hope to see you again soon.